So you may not have noticed it, but in our last video, where we got an introduction to the arithmetic of rational tangles, we made a significant conceptual shift in how we think about where tangles come from. Initially, we were thinking about rational tangles as things which we can build out of operations, the twist operation and the rotation operation. But in our last video, we made a shift in mindset to thinking about building tangles using arithmetic operations, twist arithmetic, by adding, that means juxtaposing tangles left and right and then connecting them up, or by multiplying, juxtaposing tangles up and down and then connecting them up, we now have a new recipe, a new paradigm for where tangles come from. Addition builds out by adding twists horizontally. Multiplication can build out a tangle by adding twists vertically. So where we're at right now is we have kind of a new definition of rational tangles that we can play with. We can define G to be a rational tangle if we can get G by starting from an empty tangle, which is either horizontal or vertical, and then adding and multiplying twists. And our basic twist is either the positive twist 1 or the negative twist minus 1. By adding them on the left or the right, I can build out a twist horizontally. By multiplying on top and bottom, I can build out a rational tangle vertically. So what we want to do is chase down the consequences over the next couple videos of thinking about rational tangles in this new paradigm. How does this help us get closer to a, an algorithm, a recipe, for going back and forth between tangles and tangle numbers? The first step in that process is going to be for us to think about what are the operations that we can do to tangles now that we've studied operations that matter a great deal to the tangle number and can be used to build tangles. Let's also take a look at some important operations we can do to tangles that turn out not to matter at all to the type of a tangle. And here's the big surprise. In our last video, we saw the definition of the vertical flip of a tangle and the horizontal flip of a tangle. And we're speculating, what do horizontal and vertical flips actually do to the type of a tangle? And the promise that I made back then is that they don't actually matter. That the vertical flip of a tangle and the horizontal flip of a tangle are each the same up to isotopy as the original rational tangle. And that seems completely counterintuitive. Because aren't we, for example, reversing all the crossings? Aren't we reversing where the people standing and holding the ropes are standing uh, in this process? And yes, the answer is yes to all of those things. But because of the new paradigm in which we understand where rational tangles come from, we're going to be able to prove that up to isotopy, it actually does not matter to the type of a tangle when we flip that tangle vertically or when we flip that tangle horizontally. We're preserving the isotopy type of those tangles. To actually prove why that's the case, though, to prove why flips don't matter, we're going to introduce another type of tangle operation, which also doesn't matter, called flips. One of my favorite words in maybe all of mathematics and certainly all of, of the theory of knots and, and tangles. Flips are operations that are going to be easily seen by us to be isotopy moves. We're all going to be able to agree. Uh, once we see what flips actually are, that if we think of these rational tangles as living in three dimensions, that these are just going to be isotopy moves. Because they're things that we're going to be able to do to a tangle without changing any crossings and without anybody who's holding the ropes having to change position. So let's look at what those moves actually look like. So like flips, flips come in types, a horizontal type and a vertical type. To look at the vertical type of flip, what we'll do is take the tangle, Nobody has to move from where they're holding the ropes, so everyone imagines holding the corners of this tangle in place. But then we're just going to take the tangle from the top side, crossings and all, and just flip it upside down, like this. And what you'll notice that that does is it gives me an upside down block of crossings here in the middle, but it also introduces a new crossing over here by me on the right, as well as a new crossing over there on the other side of the tangle on the left. But just because we flipped that upside down and added some new crossings, we actually haven't changed the isotopy type of this tangle. No one had to cut a rope. No one had to let go of a rope. Uh, and all we're doing is just smoothly moving these ropes through three dimensions. So that's our vertical flip. And as you might expect, a horizontal flip does the same thing just by rotating the tangle horizontally. And you'll get some new crossings on the top and some new crossings on the bottom. So clearly, flips are isotopy moves for tangles. The question is, how can we use these isotopy moves to tell us something else about the arithmetic of tangles, given that flights don't actually matter in the arithmetic at the end of the day? So here's the story. Let's get a drawing here of the 
first of all, the vertical type of flight that just takes that tangle block in the middle, rotates the top of it over the bottom of it, and in doing so, introduce, would introduce a new crossing on the left side here and a new crossing on the right side. We're going to call that a vertical flight, and we're all going to agree that in three dimensions, we're not doing anything other than smoothly moving ropes through three space, and so this is clearly an isotopy move for that reason. Same thing with the horizontal flight that took the left side and rotated it in front of the right. We've somehow gotten a horizontal mirror image of my, all my crossings in this block here in the middle, and I've introduced two new crossings, one on the top of my tangle and another on the bottom of my tangle. But again, because this is just a smooth isotopy of this tangle inside of three dimensions, we haven't actually changed anything about the fundamental uh, properties of this tangle. So the tangle type should remain the same when we apply either of these types of flights. And it turns out flips are the key ingredient in proving that flips, not just flips, but flips, horizontal flips, vertical flips of a tangle, rational tangle, don't change the isotopy type of that tangle either. And one of the reasons that we can plug them in is that each of these types of flips we can also represent by a combination of tangle arithmetic. So the vertical flight takes my tangle and flips it upside down so it changes it into the, the vertical flip of my tangle, but then also adds this positive one crossing on the right of the tangle and this negative one crossing on the left of the tangle. Right. So we can represent a vertical flip in our arithmetic scheme as negative one added to the vertical flip of g added to positive one. Notice, and this is kind of important, that the new crossing that we added on the right side of this tangle and the new crossing that this flip added on the left side of the tangle are equal and opposite. So somehow that should give us some reassurance that this flip is not actually changing overall the, the kinds of crossings that we have. This, is, this flip is almost an, an analogy at the tangle level of one of our Reitemeister moves, back from when we were talking about knots. And the same is also true about the horizontal flip. That yes, we may have taken a horizontal mirror image of our tangle block G here in the middle, but we've also added a positive one crossing on the bottom. And by added, what I really mean is multiplied using our tangle arithmetic scheme. We've multiplied by a one tangle to introduce a new one positive one crossing on the bottom. And also, a minus one uh, tangle crossing has been introduced over here on the top. So each of these flips can be represented as a combination of addition or multiplication with our horizontal or vertical flips. So somehow, it makes sense that flips would have something to say to us about flips. And indeed, that ends up being the proof. So here's the proof that the horizontal flips and the vertical flips of a rational tangle actually don't change the isotopy type of a rational tangle. This proof follows the proof from Kaufman and Lambropoulos' paper, this lemma number two. And they prove this by induction. And the reason that we get to do that is because we now have this new inductive definition of what rational tangles are. Rational tangles are all built out of the zero tangle, or the infinity tangle through an inductive process of either adding plus or minus ones to build out my tangle horizontally, or adding plus or minus ones vertically, in other words, multiplying by plus or minus ones to build out my tangle vertically. So because of that inductive definition, we can now structure an inductive proof. Starting from the base cases being the zero tangle, the infinity tangle, and the plus and minus one tangles. If we can convince ourselves that these statements are true for those base cases, um, then that will give us a place to start our induction. Um, and certainly for all of these tangles, we can verify directly that the flips are actually isotopic uh, to the original. So that's great. So then what do the induction steps look like? Let's just show you a portion of it uh, from Kaufman and Lambropoulos' proof. So because there are these two different ways to build up tangles, we can build by adding twists horizontally or by multiplying to add twists uh, vertically, we're going to look at both of those cases separately. So let's suppose that my inductive hypothesis holds for R. In other words, R is a tangle with n crossings, and we can agree that, for example, the vertical flip of R is isotopic to R itself. That's our induction hypothesis. Then if I were to add a twist on the right side of R, how do we know that, using that inductive hypothesis, that the vertical flip of that tangle, which we call F, is isotopic to F? So this diagram is from the Kaufman and Lambropoulou paper. Um, if I think about what the vertical flip of F looks like, it looks like this. But by definition, by the way that we made f, uh, it was r added to a one twist over here on the right, and so it looks like that. But then we would apply the inductive hypothesis to this subtangle right here, this tangle which we called r, which is a tangle that has n crossings. And because our hypothesis, inductive hypothesis, is that a tangle of n crossings will satisfy that the vertical flip is isotopic to the original, that means that we can replace this r subtangle with its 
original non-vertically flipped version. Right? But then, what do we have here on this side except R added to a one tangle? And that is exactly what we meant by F in the original. So here's the inductive step of the proof that in the case of building up a tangle by adding a twist on the right, that the inductive hypothesis shows us that its vertical flip is isotopic to the original. And then an analogous proof works for the vertical case. If I take R, which is a tangle in n crossings, and I tack on a new twist on the bottom by multiplying by the one tangle, then what does its vertical flip look like? Same story. We take its vertical flip, which ends up looking like that, and then by flyping, so here's where the flipes come into the puzzle, by f uh, applying a, what we called a minute ago, a vertical flipe, we can flipe this twist from the top of my tangle down to the bottom of my tangle at the cost of replacing this subtangle here, which is a reversed R, by its vertically flipped mirror image. And then applying the inductive hypothesis that says that this vertical flip is the same as its original, that shows me that I've gotten back to my original L. And so flipes don't matter up to isotopy, and that's obvious from how we define what a flipe is, just by a smooth motion of ropes. But using that isotopy equivalence for flipes, we can prove that the flips don't matter either. So the horizontal flip of a tangle and the vertical flip of a tangle, if those tangles are rational tangles built out of the inductive process we outlined at the beginning of this video, those flips don't matter to the arithmetic either. And why this is so important is now looking back at our, our flight diagrams down here on the bottom. Now imagine that I have a tangle and one of my twists on my tangles over here on the left side. Well, we can call that 1 plus g, but if I flipe that whole thing, it's going to give me the vertically flipped version of g, but I'm going to have a new tangle over here on the right, but I've untwisted the twist that used to be over here on the left. So what I get is g vertically flipped plus 1 on the right. But according to the result that we just had, g vertically flipped is the same up to isotopy for a rational tangle as g itself. And so any twist that I have on the left side of a tangle is isotopic through a, a flipe to that same twist appearing on the right side of a tangle instead. That's really super useful. And the same thing is going to be true for twists on the top of a tangle. So this tangle over here is 1 multiplied by g. So the 1 on top, g on the bottom. If I apply the horizontal flipe, it's going to untwist this twist to the top and introduce a new twist down the bottom of the tangle. And it's going to horizontally reverse my tangle block here in the middle, g. But according to this result, up to isotopy, that horizontally flipped version of the rational tangle g is isotopic to g itself. And so at the end of the day, 1 multiplied by g is the same thing as g multiplied by 1. And if we apply that process inductively, the same result is going to hold for any number of twists on the left side of a tangle. If I have n twists on the left side of a tangle, I can flip them over to be n twists on the right side of a tangle, and the piece in the middle can remain the same up to isotopy. The same thing we can use to flip any top twists. Any number of top twists can be flipped down into bottom twists instead without changing the isotopy type of the tangle that's in the middle. And this is amazing, because what it tells us is that any time we have left and top twists trying to build up our tangle, we can instead just flipe them all to the right, flipe them all to the bottom, and we haven't actually changed the tangle that's sitting there in the middle up to isotopy. So this is great. This corollary is probably the most important thing that we get in the arithmetic of rational tangles. It tells us that we can not only decide to build rational tangles through adding and multiplying by twists on the top, the bottom, the left, and the right, but we can instead think of them all as happening on the right and all happening on the bottom. And that's going to make our universe and our arithmetic much, much, much simpler. So in our next video, we want to chase down the consequences of these corollaries. What does it mean that we can now build tangles using only right twists and bottom twists? In other words, using only addition of 1 on the right and multiplication by 1 on the bottom. How are we going to use that to get what we call a canonical form for rational tangles, and then use that canonical form to figure out how to cross in between the worlds of tangles and rational numbers.